Hey guys, before we start this video, I have a quick word from our sponsor, myself. I'm sponsoring myself. The Lapel Encyclopedia is on sale right now with 14 chapters. If you have previously seen any of our content, you know that we constantly update the Lapel Encyclopedia for a one-time price. You buy it once, you get all of the updates in the future for absolutely free. So go check it out right now. You can also pick up one of these nifty shirts as well. And if you're interested, in learning more about the history of the worm guard and how it's come about and how it's uh, formed into what it is today. Keep watching this video and I'll educate you. What's up everyone? I'm back. And I'm here to tell you about the latest update to the lapel encyclopedia, the worm wrestling chapter. All right, so what has happened recently is actually very important to me. It's sort of a revelation in my own style of jujitsu, the anti-jujitsu style. The style that's been designed specifically to beat what your instructors have been teaching you. And unfortunately, well fortunately and unfortunately, the only place you can really get that information is here. But I'm gonna give you a little preview of what has happened in the world of the lapel recently. So around 2014 is when I started playing with the lapel, effectively tying up high level opponents with the three main guards ringworm guard, worm guard, and reverse Della worm guard. Just those three components, just the grips themselves and one sweep from each was enough to let me beat such greats as Leandro Lowe and Murillo Santana, okay? Now, that in itself is important because we've discovered what can be done with the lapel. Previously, no one used this grip. The most they would do is some sort of like half guard position maybe to reinforce their half guard, potentially stand up from here, okay? but the act of incorporating the wormhole, or should I say the discovery of the wormhole, changed everything. Because now we have back attacks, arm locks. Just Google any one of my matches in recent years and you can see how many different attacks there are. As well as the addition of squid guard, which is kind of an, uh, a reimagining of a position that Cobrinha used to use. But he kind of gave up on it and I saw much more potential and I went on to cultivate the position even more. Now, what happened was people became so afraid of lapel guard because they didn't understand it. And I hadn't uh, explained in detail what was actually happening. But what was very apparent is that if my opponents did normal jiu-jitsu against me, they would fall into the worm guard trap, okay? So every time I grabbed the lapel, people started backing away from me. Not only were they backing away, I could deal with them backing away, but they started dropping to their knees, both knees usually. If one knee is up, or any leg gets anywhere near my reachable vicinity and I slap on the worm guard, they were in trouble. So it kind of pushed jujitsu backwards about 10 years. And ever, well, in my personal experience, when people fought me, they started passing on their knees again. And I was ready for all the standing passing that had just come into the scene, everyone focusing heavily on knee cuts and leg drags and all of these modern acquisitions. And that's what the lapel was designed to beat. And it worked really well. But people really, really hate losing. So much so that they'll um, go back to a more boring style just to survive the position because it was so dangerous. And I'm not saying this to impress you, but to impress upon you just that the mechanics of the lapel and what it's done. It's not me specifically, because anyone can use lapel guard and w feel the same thing that's things that I've felt in my training and in the competition and the reactions that my, uh, our opponents are giving us, okay? Now, what happened from there is when people started going down on their knees, I had to find a new solution. I still wanted to use the lapel because I knew the potential of it hadn't yet been fully realized. And that's when I met the Polish worm who actually taught me this position, incorporating the lapel lasso. Now I originally didn't enjoy the lapel lasso because when we, my opponents stood up, I wasn't able to set up any sort of real attack. I felt like it was a stalling position. So I actually discouraged people from doing it. The only application that I really saw was just a convenient setup for the original worm. But through some chance meetings of some very talented minds in the Jiu-Jitsu community, he showed me the Polish worm rider and this changed everything because now my opponents, when they sat to their knees, I had an incredibly effective attack that was just as dangerous as the most powerful of all the worm positions, the reverse Della worm. By setting up the Polish worm rider sweeps here, I was able to set up the power of the worm against an opponent who's on both knees. From here, I had all sorts of chokes, 
arm lock attacks, sweeps, and various things that kind of reignited my passion for the lapel because for a short time it seemed that it was just going to result in stalemates and I wasn't able to keep attacking when someone just went into full stall mode. The Polish Worm Rider opened the game back up and now no one is safe. However, they still tried to retreat. They tried to back away and get away from my lapels. Even going so far as to sit back and accept sweeps because if they didn't accept the sweep, I would take the back. The reverse Della Worm sweep itself was so threatening that the second I got the grip, there was a very high chance that I was gonna take the back, a very high probability of taking someone's back. So high that my opponent, Miha, or anyone I was fighting would rather sit to their butt completely, like go all the way, like they would let me sweep them, like sit back, Miha, like that, yes. They'll actually sit away like this just to avoid me taking their back. And this led us to the next era of lapel grappling, where I started taking my foot out of the lapel and coming up before they had an opportunity to sit back up. And they maybe would just accept the sweep, then most of the time they wouldn't even fight it. And that's when I started trying to incorporate lapel passing, okay? So I would come up on top with the lapel already, and it was more convenient to try and learn to pass with this grip rather than let go, reestablish grips, and do traditional passing. It just seems more efficient to make use of the grips I've already had and the grips I had worked for. So come back here, Miha, go on your butt again. So as I would sweep my opponents, I had to become comfortable on top, but I still wanted to explore the possibilities of the lapel, and I started using the platinum worm passing position, which allowed me to beat Nicholas Marigali, another great world champion. That set up all sorts of systems, as you can see in, uh, which chapter is it, Mia? Chapter 13. Chapter 13 of the lapel encyclopedia. I go through all of the awesome passing and tie-ups that you can do with the lapel from top, which previously I, no one had ever seen before, and I had never seen before. And it became like my A game in competition and in training. Now, that led us to the third act, where not only is the lapel dangerous from guard, but it's also dangerous from top. So anyone who had studied my game, when I get to the reverse Della Worm, which was my power, power move, I would say, now he doesn't want to give up the sweep anymore, but he still doesn't want to give me the back. So it became another stalemate opportunity where people really tried to just avoid the position, block my ability to go to the back, but they knew if they sat back too far to their butt to avoid the position, I could just come on top without really any effort. I would maintain the lapel, go into my passing systems, so they never even had an opportunity to play their guard, right? So what happens? Well, that's where the fear comes in. Here, if I have a worm guard or a lapel guard position and my opponent starts trying to back away or even stand up and posture really hard to try and break my grips to just kill any sort of uh, transient motion through the game following the flow of grappling, I realized, well, wait, the lapel doesn't just reinforce guard, it also reinforces passing. Of course, it should reinforce takedowns as well. And the efficiency of the lapel transitioned into the third and final act. Well, I guess you could call the submissions the fourth act. But here, all of the worm wrestling came about, which you can see in the, my recent matches over the course of the last six to eight months, um, where I started using that using that reaction from my opponent where they were backing away whenever I got a lapel. They would back away to like stop the initial setup in the first place. That's actually what would happen most of the time. I would get the lapel and they would just fight everything in their power to just control the lapel, either grabbing it themselves to pull away from me or just trying to break my grips. That's, that was fine because now I don't have to only have one goal. Previously, if I had this, you knew I was gonna go into a lapel guard. But if I have worm wrestling, it added a layer of danger that now he can't just back away because if he backs away too much, the worm wrestling can come in. So he has to come back in a little bit and he has to move into me when I get the, the grips. He has to drive into me like this, which let me finally have the full motion coming back to square one. My opponents were finally attacking me again, which lets me set up the initial grips and the initial attacks here and start threatening the original worm guard positions without fear of them just trying to stall it out because I had a new threat that was countering their stalling attempts, okay? But I didn't want to stop there. 
So then I started figuring out ways to transition out of all of the worm guard positions, lapel, uh, the squid, all these different positions, into the different worm wrestling opportunities. Here, taking advantage of the fact that my opponents were not used to wrestling or doing judo with a lapel tied around one of their legs, and I found all sorts of different techniques and attacks that really thrives in that environment. And so just recently we released 20 videos on the worm wrestling system and what it can do as an overall addition to anyone who likes to play lapel guards or anyone who just likes to wrestle and come up on something. Because if you're a half guard player, worm wrestling is going to complement your game immensely. Any sort of close, tight game, you'll see huge amounts of crossover from like deep half style to normal half guard to Lucas Leitch guard. The lapel can be involved and extrapolate the actual ability to sweep your opponent by a magnitude of what I would say around 10. It's that powerful. And you can see that because, for instance, my match against Muhammad Ali. Previously, I had struggled against him in quite a few matches. He was very good at posturing out of my lapels, my lapel grips, and he had very threatening passing. And once I got to the grip, it would be a struggle to sweep. However, recently I was able to actually transition out of the guard, take a step back, and then move back in with lapel wrestling, which was much more effective against his body type and body style. And so giving myself and all of the lapel enthusiasts out there those options is, has been huge. And if you've been paying attention to the competition, the competitions in the recent months and the last year, all of the newer grapplers are kind of adopting this style because it's easier to learn. It doesn't take as much time to pick up a technique and immediately implement it because the, the positions are very clear. Like you're just passing grips. There's not a subtlety of like muscular squeezing. There's a lot of like in, in traditional jiu-jitsu, so much is like what people call invisible jiu-jitsu. A lot of it is about like subtle shoulder pressures and squeezes and breaths and tightening to like figure out how to optimize these controlled positions. And that comes over the course of 10 to 15 years. It can't really be taught. It's more about you learning how to use your own body to effectively control other people's bodies. And no one can teach you how to control your own body. It's just something that you build through coordination and time. The lapel guard series and lapel wrestling and uh, lapel passing kind of bypasses all of that learning curve and allows you to set, like, have very clear applications of a lapel to control your opponent in a way that previously would have taken 10 years of time to learn. So it's kind of an extrapolated learning method that follows the same principles, but under a much more simplified format is the easiest way to describe it, basically. So go check it out. It's on lapelguard.com right now, and you can save over $85. It's on sale right now. If you haven't seen me in action, check out the matches. They're on Flow, Grappling, and also on YouTube. Um, anything in the, in the last year or so, you'll see some lapel wrestling applications, plenty of lapel guard, and even lapel passing. If you have any, um, questions about how effective it actually is. You can see it live. So check it out guys. Thanks for watching.